for your for your posture, hallelujah, for your posture of, of prayer and for your dedication and for you not showboating because a lot of times people they do stuff in church and they uh, do certain things because they want to look deep and sound deep. But I believe that God is a rewarder of those. And I wish I had 10,000 people that would help me give praise to God right here. But I believe that God, that the scripture is true. And that's this. The Bible says, I am a rewarder. I am a rewarder of those that diligently. I wish I had some help in here. I am a rewarder of those that diligently. That quit. That's what I need, musicians. God, fire. Hope I shine the whole Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is a water. Samuel chapter 13. No, excuse me, I'm messing up. 
2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 13. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 13. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 13. Amen. Amen. Even as you're turning there, I pray that you all have the spirit of multitask tonight because I want you to keep these signs on the screen in your remembrance. Remember the road closer, the road, or excuse me, the road construction ahead. Remember this sign that's on the screen. Amen. As you all, I'll let you turn. I'm going to leave them on the screen for a second. As you turn, amen. for these wonderful, these wonderful, uh, these wonderful artificial musicians tonight. Amen. They showed up on time. Amen. They beat, they beat me here if you do, whether you believe it or not. Amen. Amen. I thank God. Amen. Amen. We thank God for technology. Amen. Second Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 11 verse 13 but even as we're getting ready I'll let you because I see some of you still turning amen 2 Samuel chapter 11 verse 13 amen amen 2 Samuel chapter 11 2 Samuel 11 verse 13 amen we're picking up where we left off from last week and even as you're turning Amen. I did a little more study before I came out tonight. I looked at this verse and took another little hard look at the chapter in my commentary Bible or my commentary website that I use for really in-depth study. And what I found out as you're turning, what I found out is that uh, what we saw in David's downfall as you're turning to 2 Samuel chapter 11 verse 13 but even as we look at David's downfall of sleeping with Bathsheba what I did not know was that uh, David had been dealing with uh, the, 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 the disagreement of God's way of one man having one wife or one husband having one wife David struggled in agreeing with God's way, not just in that moment, for but for the prior 20 years. For 20 years before uh, Uriah's death. Amen. Thank you, musicians. But 20 years, 20 years before, uh, y'all can grab your Bibles. Amen. You can put your instruments down and grab your Bibles. Amen. 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 But um, uh, uh, 20 years prior, to David uh, sleeping with Bathsheba, uh, David had shown signs of disagreeing with one husband having one wife. Come on. So this thing did not just start right. in 2 Samuel. All right, all right, all right. Say amen. Amen. This did not just start in 2 Samuel. And so uh, we can go as far as to say, okay, if David became king, at, uh, at, at, at 20, depending on what uh, time frame he was in yeah. during his sleeping with Bathsheba, yeah, then we're talking about, let's say, he, because he's, before he can be king, he has to be, he came, he became king at 30. All right. So we would have to look at what year he's in reign in 2 Samuel chapter 11 and count back 20 years. So that would very easily put him in his mid-20s. Amen. I'm going somewhere. All right, all right, all right. Amen. As you're, for, as you're still looking for 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 13, you're probably there. So I'm just going to talk and work my way on where I'm going. Amen. And so here's the thing about, here's the thing about sin. You notice how there are things that we can be taught. Many things you can be taught, but sin is not one of those things you have to be taught. All right. <laughs> That's my point. Amen. 
Sin is not one of those. Oh, y'all quiet. Amen. Sin is not one of those things. That's right. That's right. That you have to be taught. No, no, no. It is in your nature Automatic. by default. Automatic. Prophet, what scripture do you have for that? Well, the Bible says there's no good thing that lies in the flesh. Your flesh would, would tell us that our flesh is always in disagreement Amen. with our spirit man. Amen. Amen. Our flesh, and when I say our flesh, I don't just mean your sexual desires. Amen. But I mean even the thoughts that come to your mind. Amen. I'm, oh, come on. Amen. I'm talking about the suggestions that come to your mind even when it comes down to food. Amen. Amen. I can't afford it, but I'm going to stop doing it. I, 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 I want this. I want it now. And if I can find any way to manipulate my way in there, I'm going to get it. Before we get into our scriptures of tonight, I want you to see these signs again that's on our screen tonight. I want you to see these signs again, and I want you to let them get in your spirit. Remember this sign, road, close, road construction ahead. Amen. For those of you who have driven a vehicle, a motor vehicle before, or you've been in a vehicle, uh, you went to school, you rode a bus, you've seen these signs before. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And never in your maybe 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years of living did you think that these signs would apply to more than just obeying the laws of the road? But these signs tonight show us more of a spiritual meaning on tonight. If you really let it get in your spirit, let it get into your mind, let it get into your heart, let it get in all three. Yeah, yeah. Road construction ahead. Remember I told you that this sign does not necessarily mean that nobody can't go where the construction is. But what this sign suggests is if you don't play a part in my construction, stay out. If you're okay, do I got to break every sign down or y'all got me? If you're not playing a part in me being better, I don't need you behind this sign. If you're not here to help me, then indirectly you're here to hurt me. That's right, that's right, that's right. Amen. Say amen. Amen. Go ahead. Everybody got to come on. Come on. Road construction ahead. Remember our topic, our whole series topic is under development. Be aware. Be aware. This does not say nobody can't come through. This just says if you're not authorized to come through this sign, then you don't need to be here. Because let me say this to hope five people talk back to me. Because anybody who go beyond this sign and you don't have the right safety gear, you don't have the right tools, you don't have the right necessities, you can not only be more harm to what you're trying to help, but you can be a harm to yourself. Tell somebody tonight, don't ignore the signs now, don't it? Because some, oh, I shut down. Because some people will show you. See, one of the things I, I thank God for my for my godmother, Apostle Kashima Hodges. One of the things that I, that I always have heard her preach in the years that I've known her, one of the things I've always heard her preach is this, and I hope y'all will talk back to me, and that's this. Uh, when people show you who you are, who they are, believe them the first time. I, when when people show you right. who they really are, yes. you ought to believe them the first time. All right. All right. All right. I heard a saying over the last seven days, Sister Esther, and I said that I would use that saying as much as is needed, and that's this. The saying that I learned, Brother Joseph, was this. One thing you can never do is continue to feed a snake and never think you're not on the menu. That's right. Amen. 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 Prophet, that sounds good, but what does that mean? In other words, if somebody's always gossiping to you about somebody else's business, That's right. you're just know 
that they're and they and especially if they if they now hear what I'm saying because some of y'all might get triggered by what I'm saying. If somebody comes to you, follow the exact signs of what I'm saying. Because, like I told us, I want to say it was last week, we'll, we will hear the right language from people who have repeated the same thing that people who have heard us say. And we'll automatically be triggered by, by the right statement coming from the right person, but because it once upon a time came from the wrong person, now we're triggered by it. And then we come up with statements like this. If anybody, had to, uh, then we come up with statements like this, Sister Esther. All liars will always say, you can trust me. All liars don't say that. But it's the liar that you knew that told you that, and you ignored the signs. You see what I'm saying? You saw all the red flags, but you ignored it. For whatever reason, only you know. Amen. Come on. Come on. Road construction ahead. This is saying, it's not saying that nobody can't come through. It's just saying only the right people can come through. All right. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Next sign. Danger. Do not enter. Under no circumstances, until proper clearance of this area, of this site, has been given that we are able to go through this and nobody, until we can ensure proper safety, Amen. nobody can come through. Yes, that's right. You come out of a whole shire. You have to, hallelujah. Why am I saying this? I don't know. And I need to check Facebook and make and, and see if they talking because y'all, 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 I think y'all need to stop by Starbucks when you got here. All the one danger. Do not enter. In other words, there are some times where we will hallelujah. There will be times where we will allow access to some of us, we have uh, once upon a time, this may not be everybody, but once upon a time, some of us have came out of a major heartbreak or break up, and we decided, well, I don't like to be lonely, so we got with the next Joe Blow that said, I love you, right? And we messed around, and we allowed somebody into an area that we didn't make sure that, that they were clear to come in. Now you got hurt, and I'm not talking to none of y'all, I'm talking to people in the back of you. Now you got hurt, and they got hurt. And it ain't just relationships, it's some friendships. Why y'all not talking about me? It's some friendships. No, 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 no. If you didn't broke up with five different people, and before they broke up with you, they all said the same thing, there might be a good chance it ain't them. It might just be you. Danger, do not enter. Now let me flip the statement that I just made on this sign, and, and I'm leaving it alone, and that's this. Uh, 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 danger, do not enter. For some of us, what that's telling us is, uh, 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 if we do not make sure, watch me, watch me, watch what I'm about to do. I'm going to make this statement with the signs. Are y'all ready? Amen. Some of us, if we don't make sure that we take the necessary steps to go from this sign to this sign, then we'll mess around and stay here too long. That's all right. Amen. Who y'all not trying to have my kind of church? If we don't make, I'm gonna try to get doo -doo 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 -doo, push play. If we don't take the necessary steps to go from this sign to this sign, we'll mess around and stay in this place too long. Amen. Try to figure out. Try to figure out. 
Because this sign don't mean nobody can't come through. This just means only the right people can come through. But this sign means nobody can come through. And if you ain't careful, you'll start making statements like this and the whole five people catch it. You'll start making statements like all black men cheat. All white men cheat. All black women are like this. All white women are like this. No, Negro, you need to heal from the person that hurt you. And you need to allow God to touch that heart of yours. Show you to rewind back in your mind what happened. Take what fault you have done. Take what fault they did. You need to forgive you. You need to forgive them. And vice versa. Because the danger of staying here too long and never getting here is the lack of repentance. All right. Woo. Here, I need to accept something wrong. Here, this shows at least there's some work being done. Here, no, 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 no. Everything is shut down. I don't want no advice. I don't want to talk. See, this place, if you ain't careful, this place, this sign lead can lead to depression. I don't want nobody to talk to me. I don't want nobody. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to be involved in nothing. I'm just going to stay home. I'm just going to go to work and go back home. I don't want to go out. I don't want to be social. I don't want to do nothing. I don't know. No, 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 no. Now, here it is. Sometimes you need a season of being by yourself. Don't hear what I'm not saying. But notice what I didn't say. I said a what? A season. Amen. To everything. Oh, I'm in the Word. There is a time and a season and a purpose under the sun. Because let me say this and help you understand that the scripture that you've always put together with marriage is not always referring to marriage. And that's this. It is not good for a man to be alone. Y'all talk back to me. Amen. Amen. Good to see you, Sister Vanessa. Amen. Amen. I'm looking at Facebook, y'all, on my phone here. I don't want y'all to think I'm going crazy. I'm not going crazy. <laughs> Restricted area, you heard that? co pastor said, praise the Lord. <laughs> Everybody tell Mother Vanessa, praise the Lord. One, two, three. <laughs> Amen. Restricted area. Mm -hmm. Authorized employees only. Yes. All right. All right now. Restricted area. It's restricted. restricted. You can, thank you. Special trained people only. Can't know just no regular people come through. Restricted area only. Authorized employees only. If you ain't got a key, if you don't have access, you can't come through. I don't, I'm sorry. Amen. That's it. That's it. It's a spiritual reference. Yeah, there's a spiritual reference to it. Yeah, yeah. This is a good sign no matter how you look at it. Because this sign don't necessarily mean something's wrong. All right. One. This is saying, in order for you to come through, you got to be an authorized employee only. Yeah. This is a good place to be. Everybody can't come through. Yes. Some of y'all don't believe that that's how God has us set up. Can I prove it to you in scripture that that's how God has us set up and hope you talk back to me? The Bible says nobody, no man, nobody can come to the Father except they come through me. Unless you've been authorized. You can't get to the Father. What you mean I can't get to the Father? I know. Unless you come through the Son, unless you've been authorized, you can't get to the Father. I told you this is a good place to be. Prophet, what about John 3.16? No, I, I heard the thought, so I'm going to deal with it. Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Here's the, here's the authorization. Whosoever believes believe. in, him. in him 
shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Which means that the authorization comes from your belief. Thank you, Mother Vanessa. Restricted area only. This ain't a bad sign. This is a good sign. Means you have been standards. It don't mean that. It don't mean that certain people can't get through, but until you have the proper authorization, then and only then can you come through. All right. See, the other signs meant until work is done. All right. Yes. Or there's work that need to be done. Yes. This one implies you can come through right. long as you are authorized. Anybody can come through. You just got to go through proper authorization. Let's go to verse 13 now. Hallelujah. Let's go to 2 Samuel verse, uh, excuse me, 2 Samuel 11, verse 13. Amen. I always say, Lucas, my auntie's on here tonight, y'all. Oh, I get that again. <laughs> and when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him. Remember, well, I'm not going to go back over it. Y'all remember what we we'll talked about last week. Amen. Yes. We are now at the point where David told Uriah, Terry here today and tomorrow, and I will. This is the second time that he tried to get Uriah to go back home and go see about his wife that's pregnant. Yes. Amen. So, amen. We're going to keep moving. <laughs> And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. This is David making you while you're drunk. Because David, oh Lord, I said I wasn't going to go too much over, but I'll touch it a little bit. David, remember David, he slept with Bathsheba. And he calls Bathsheba to get pregnant. And now he is trying to get Uriah to go home. I'll at least do this, I'll at least do this much. He's trying to get Uriah to go home and sleep with his now pregnant wife. Amen. That is with child, with David's child. Yes. Okay. To cover up That's right. that she's now pregnant. Amen. David's trying to cover up when he didn't remember the two things that I told you that we're going to see in this text and that is sabotage and manipulation. Sabotage and manipulation. It's a little journey but we're going to make it. We're going to be done by 8.30. Sabotage and manipulation. And so in the B calls of verse 13 and he made him drunk. And, and at even he went out to lie on his bed and with the servants of his Lord but went not down to his house. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. Now, if you are familiar with the text, then you know that David has Uriah killed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I want you to see just how bad this really got now at verse 14. Amen. Yeah. David has sent a letter. I'm going to go ahead and tell you what happens now. He sent him a letter by the hand of a person that's about to die. So, in other words, David had a letter written out that's going to go to Joab, but the one who's delivering the letter is Uriah. To tell Joab that when the battle gets at its height, when it gets the most intense, I want you to let Uriah be at the forefront. Everybody else retreat and get Uriah die. We're getting somewhere. I know I told you how this thing is going to kind of finish, but we're getting somewhere. I'm doing all this for a reason. Verse 15. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. Verse 16. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city, that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. Amen. So Joab, and now, I know you all are looking in the King James, but 
But in verse 16 and 17, I'm now going to the Message Bible. So it's going to read a little different than what you're reading, but I want, but you're still going to get the point. Verse 16 and 17, it says, So Joab holding the city under sage put Uriah in a place where he knew there were fierce enemy fighters. When the city's defenders came out to fight Joab, some of David's soldiers were killed, including Uriah the Hittite. I'm making this point tonight because, again, as we're in this series entitled Under Development, uh, I would like us to see that God is showing us on tonight that, uh, again, this series is to push evangelism. But before we can evangelize, we got to allow God to make sure that he doesn't work with us. Amen. Reason being is because uh, before we call ourselves inviting somebody to the church, what does it look like that you are inviting somebody to God and telling somebody about God, but you yourself is messy? Come on, all right, all right, all right, all right. You don't see how this applies to this text, do you? Because there are many people that are serving under David, black boy teach, that know about the songs that David has wrote about God. I told you I did some intense study about this. So now what it could bring some people to the conclusion of is, this is a man out of God's own heart, but if his heart wants something else, he'll do whatever he needs to do to get what he wants. Now here, let me say this statement because now I got to clean up what I'm saying, and that's this: we are never to advertise that we are perfect. Amen. We are with error, and will forever be with error because, again, as I told you in the beginning of this lesson, the Bible says there's no good thing that lies in the flesh. The error is when you see what you did wrong. And you don't take a moment to say, let me repent. That's right. Can I back you up to uh, the first couple verses that we looked at last week and hope you see my point? Because remember, David saw Bathsheba bathing from the top of his castle. Uh -huh. Amen. And then got information, come on y'all, got information about Bathsheba, of who she was, who she was connected to. Amen. And what I found out, co-pastor, was that these were men that were close to David. It wasn't just Uriah, but the father of Bathsheba, the grandfather of Bathsheba, and the husband of Bathsheba were all close to David. Now, if we stay within the context of this text, as I told us last week, because David is king, by law, he can do what he want to do. But when it comes to God, no, no, you can't just do what you want to do and think, no, no, that ain't how this thing works. Come on. And so, here it is now. I'm making my point because it's a point I want to make right through here before I get back to the text, and that's this. The point of what I would like us to really see on tonight is this. God, the Holy Spirit, dealt with me, and he was showing me, he said, Jonathan, don't just look at the text as outward sabotage and manipulation, but see it as inward sabotage and manipulation. I said, okay, God, you really got to show me what you're saying. The Lord showed me, he said, notice the people that David had to help him complete this goal of sleeping with Bathsheba. Come on, Jesus. Last week, as I told you last week, we have the tendency as people, we know who to go to to agree with what we want. That's right. Amen. Jesus. Amen. If we know we want the advice that will push us in the direction of what we want to do, we know who to talk to. If we want advice from the people that know that we know they're going to tell us what we want to hear and don't want to hear, That's right. Jesus. we know who to go to. Amen. Jesus. We know. We know. But how it 
it becomes inward sabotage, and I need three people to talk back to me, uh, and that's this. It can become inward sabotage because, as I told you before, this lust that David was dealing with did not just start here. It started 20 years prior. Are you following me yet? So what I'm saying is, is that uh, it can get to the point, Sister Esther, to where if we're not careful, we will convince ourselves that we're doing right when God has showed us and told us and given a sign after sign that what you're doing is outrightly against what God said. So you convince yourself that the small sins, quote unquote, are okay. Jesus, no, no. <laughs> speeding. Did he just say speeding? Yes. Let me repeat it in case you didn't catch it the first time. Speeding. Being late. Not being honest. Gossiping. Lying. Things that we think are small that we can get away with and that we can just repent for real quick and cover up. Right. Because it went from David lusting to him now lying. That's right. Jesus. That's right. Y'all, y'all, y'all follow the story, right? Amen. It went from David lusting yes. to him now getting the information and manipulating in his mind, oh, it'll be all right. Now you're sabotaging one of your own that is most loyal to you. To send them home and even get them drunk to go sleep with the person that is married to them, but you're trying to make them seem like your baby's their baby. Liar. And we have the tendency to do this, do this little thing called, and I heard a preacher say it like this one time, and I said, I'm going I'm to adopt that, and that's this. We like to do this thing in our mind called push the override button. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, Jonathan, don't, don't do that override. Uh -huh. Jonathan, you know, override. Well, Jonathan, you know, if it was, you know, you know, if this is God's way of doing the thing, you know, there won't be as much confusion in override. Uh -huh. Just repent. No, not, there's too many risks in what you're about to do now. I think you need to really think about this. Override. Yeah. Override. 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 Override, override, override. No, I don't want to hear it. No, this is what I want. This is what I want to do. I want what I can get out of the deal. I don't care who it hurt. Let me say this, and maybe some of you have said it, and that's this. I know I'm going to hurt them, but they're but they a big boy. They're a big girl. They'll, 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 they'll recover from it. Oh, they'll be all right. Oh, yeah. You know, that's what you say. Give us away. Don't do it. David, if I could just have your right and killed, you ain't even thinking about the woman that you're sleeping with. Uh -huh. Because what if Bathsheba, because the text never suggests that Bathsheba finds out that David's the one that gets you right and killed, but what if he ever, what if she does find out one day? That it was you that set the whole thing up. You're the one oh. that. That's right. You're my baby. <laughs> when you sat by <laughs> Because eventually, when you really fall in love with, and I and man, if three of y'all don't talk back to me, and if three people online don't say nothing to me, then I'm done. I done messed up this whole thing. And that's this. When you're really in love with somebody, eventually you're gonna tell them the truth. Eventually, you're gonna break the eventually something gonna come up. And don't let y'all break up and get back together. And they ask you, did you see anybody when we were, oh, Lord, it's bad enough that I did something with somebody when we were broken up. But if I lie to you about it, 
somebody may be saying, why is Prophet talking about this and this series is supposed to be about evangelism? Because before we can go get the dirt off somebody else, we got to get the dirt off us first. Because the question because the question will eventually become, can are you clean enough to help get the dirt off of me? That's eventually right. what the question is going to turn to. All right. All right. Are your hands clean? Oh, is your heart pure? Oh, because even David, now don't look so hard at David to where you don't see yourself. Because it may not be you that has somebody killed, but in some way, shape, or form, all of us, all of us, all of us have manipulated and sabotaged someone, something, or even ourselves. Working on me. Yeah. When that stop being your prayer, yes. that's right. 
I feel like you either in one or two categories. Either you have completely lost your cotton picking mind, or you need to go to heaven and be with God and the angels and the seraphims and the. Because you're perfect. We don't need you here. Because somebody may say, oh, well, there's somebody perfect on this planet, then we need to walk after them. No, 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 because somebody who's perfect, if you're not careful, you will mess around and you can no longer, uh, with conviction, preach grace. All right. You can no longer, with conviction, preach the cross. Because you understand that it's not by my own works. I wish I had a church in here tonight. It's not by what I've done, but it's because over 2,000 years ago. No, no, I'm not going to do this because I hear preaching my voice. But it's because over 2,000 years ago, somebody decided to go to Calvary. And somebody decided to lay down their life for a wretch just like me. And if he didn't do it, I would be lost. I would not be here. Over oh, seeing Lucas and Mother Vanessa, I see your comments. Be careful because I feel church. No, I'm just kidding. Y'all keep on. Y'all keep on. <laughs> if he died my whole shire, if he didn't die, I couldn't live. Let me say this my previous statement. I hope all five of y'all catch it and ten watch online, and that's this. If he didn't take on my dirt, then I could have never been clean. If he never would have took on my dirt, the Bible says that he took on sin. Yeah, that's right. All I'm he, that's right. he didn't know sin. He didn't sin at all, right. but he took it on yeah. so you could be clean. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The old Baptist church said it like this He took my black soul, yeah. <laughs> dipped it in red blood. Oh, I wish I had some help in here. Yeah. And my black soul went in that red blood and came out white as snow. Yeah. I dare, when I start too much trouble, I dare somebody put in a comment section and look down your road, here, those that are here in person, and say if he didn't have to do it, but he did. I wish you would just tell somebody that. No, 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 uh uh. -uh. No, see, I feel this preacher, this preacher Jonathan over here, he coming up on my right side. I need him to chill for a minute. He didn't have to do it, but, but he did. Now y'all, listen, don't take my, 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 my vocal theatrics and think that I'm trying to entertain you. No, this is how I express my gratefulness. Because as I tell you all often, I don't need a sound system and a keyboard and drums. All I need is a thought. When I think about the many times that my black tail should have died, y'all ain't got to talk back to me. I think about the times that I rolled a blunt and it should have been laced. Y'all ain't got to talk back to me. So why not? Why wouldn't I allow him to keep working on me? Why wouldn't I want him to keep making me more like him? Because he became the perfect sacrifice. So we look at verse 16, 17. I'm getting back to the text. Because I thank God for helping that anchor to go down. Because had that anchor not gone down, we would have went on a ride on this wave. And this service, this Bible study would have turned into a whole Wednesday night revival and it would have went left real quick. <laughs> Verse 16 and 17, I'm in the message Bible. You are looking, you all are looking at the King James, so it's going to sound different, but it's all going to line up. Are you with me? Verse 16, 17. So Joab holding the city under sage put Uriah in a place where he knew there were fierce enemy fighters. When the city's defenders came out to fight Joab, some of David's soldiers were killed. Uriah was not the only one that died. 
Did you see it? Amen. Uriah was not the only one that died. Some of David's soldiers died too. That's right. Amen. Some of Yes, ma'am. Where at 2 Samuel 11, verse 16. Yeah. Now, Mother, you are looking, I'm talking Mother Vanessa right quick because I saw her comment. We're in the King James, oh, no, excuse me, you are looking at King James, but I, I'm looking at the Message Bible because I, 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 I felt led to upload the Message Bible up on here. And I think what she's trying to tell me is that she's going to the message Bible. I think that's what she's telling me. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But I will make my point while you're working on that. Amen. David is showing us, or indirectly showing us, he through what he's done, it's allowing us to see what sabotage and manipulation can do. Remember I told you that you and I are in one of two categories. We're either in the category of needing help, once upon a time we needed help, or we're not in the category of receiving these spiritual nuggets so we can help someone else. All right. All right, now. But don't, but tell, tell somebody, be true to yourself. Be true to yourself. What do you mean by that? Why did I say that? If you know that you were in the category of needing help, because I know I'm in the category of needing help because God had to show me that with me, I have a problem with sabotaging myself. All right. Come on. Because let me tell you something about self-sabotage. So let me take 30 seconds to do this, and that's this. When it's self-sabotage, you don't need other people to agree with you. Y'all ain't got to talk bad to me. When it's self-sabotage, you don't need other people to agree with you. You would have came up to your own conclusion in your head what you were going to do. See, what they call it, and this is what David did, what David did was not just murder. It was premeditated murder. It was thought out. Laid out. It was planned. It was orchestrated. I got 11 minutes. So David, and the thing about sin, Sister Esther, and this is why I've learned that it's just best to do things God's way. Because if you're not careful, see, let me say this, and I got to really deal with a self-righteous spirit. And that's this. It ain't none of y'all. It's the, it's the person sitting in the balcony all the way in the back in the third row. Because I need to deal with the spirit that's on this lady right over here in the third row all the way in the back of the balcony. And that's this. All because you see in this text, we get to see who David's sabotage affected. But you need to know that if you allow yourself to operate in that spirit of sabotage and manipulation and doing underhanded stuff, whether you know about who it affected or not, please understand that that spirit does not just affect who you're trying to get. That spirit, I wish y'all would talk back to me, that spirit of sabotage and manipulation and being underhanded in trickery and in trickery, that does not just affect the person that you're trying to get, but it affects everybody connected to that person. David, you tried to get Uriah, but you ended up hurting your people, Uriah's people, Bathsheba, and your son. And if you really look down in the story, if you really take time to look beyond this, this sin caused somebody to get raped. That's right. That's right. Oh, Hallelujah. He's born in the family. Hold Hold When the city's defenders came out to fight Joab, because you may not ever know about the 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 calamities and the and the and the innocent bystanders of that spirit in operation. But all because you don't know about it don't mean it does not happen. Yes, that's right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's right. Ooh, thank you, thank you, thank you. you don't believe me? Even David's son Solomon 
ended up following in David's footsteps with having 200 plus wives, I believe, and like 500 concubines. I might be getting my details mixed up here. Now, a point that I'm making even, and that is this. When it comes to us being saved, believers, we got to know that not only does our anointing and our and, 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 our, and the oil that's on our lives and all those different things, not only does that flow, but the dirt that you do and the spirits that you operate in that's not of God, that can flow too. There's a prophetic flow. And then there's a palm reading flow. Yes, that's right. There's a soul, there's a soul searching flow. Yes. Y'all ain't got to talk bad to me. I bet you if you talk to, I bet you if you go out here tonight and find you a witch, they'll tell you the same thing. <laughs> that's right. It's called soul reading. <laughs> Root working. and pass them in my line. It's called witchcraft. Actually, it's worse than witchcraft. It's called disobedience. Thank you, Overseer Lucas. 700 wives and 300 concubines. Verse 18 through 21. Let me see how I can do this. Or oh, Holy Spirit, I'm just let Holy Spirit have his way. Joab, 2 Samuel verse 11, 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 18 through 21 in the message Bible is now what I'm looking at. Joab sent David a full report on the battle. He instructed the messenger, after you have given to the king a detailed report on the battle, if he flares in anger, say and by the way, your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead. Let me explain what's happening now in this text and hope you catch it. The things that I told you as far as somebody getting raped, and even when it came down to Solomon having, as Overseer Lucas has helped me out tonight, Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. I'm not going to show you directly in this text where sabotage has now had its own offspring. Can I show you? The text just said, Joab sent a report to David, and Joab instructed the person that would give a report to David about how the battle was going, follow the story, Amen. Joab, who is at the battlefield, yes. has sent a, he's sending a letter by a messenger because Uriah is dead. So now Joab is using somebody else. Are y'all still, are you catching it? Or you ain't got it yet? Okay, I'll keep talking on you yet. David, David sent a letter, excuse me, Joab sent a letter by somebody to give a letter of a report to David. Now here's the sabotage, you got to catch it. Joab prepared the messenger and told the messenger, if David gets upset, after you tell him what went wrong in the battle and that men died and how we did it, tell him Uriah is dead. Yeah, Push play. Joab sent a letter by a messenger. Joab told the messenger, tell. By the way, Uriah is dead. It, thank you. This is what it cost for the assignment of one dying because you wanted one to die, multiple casualties have taken place. In other words, Joab, in layman's terms, had the messenger put in the letter, hey, David, those 
some of your people had to die, the one that you wanted to die died. So David, you can be upset, but the fact that the one you wanted to die died, that's going to kind of ease your anger a little bit. So now the same spirit that David has operated in yeah. has now gone to Joab. Like people like priests. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You see why it's so important for God to deal with us first? Amen. I'm not saying don't evangelize, and I'm not saying wait until you become so called perfect. But what I am saying is, God don't want you to be perfect, He just wants you to master repentance. Yeah. We are going towards being perfect. Come on. Every day. Amen. We will never be perfect until we're with God. Because we still got a flesh on earth, we got the battle. But the moment you think that you completely won the battle against your flesh, and that you are just perfect, I'm good. Now you've now opened yourself to a leeway for Satan to creep in somehow. It may not be manipulation, it may not be sabotage, but some way he's gonna creep. I promise you. He gonna find a way in. The moment you think you have arrived, that's when Satan gonna arrive, believe it or not. Joab's messenger arrived in Jerusalem and gave the king a full report. This is verse 22 through 24 in the King James Version. Joab's messenger arrived in Jerusalem and gave the king a full report. And this is why even though this, this series, and I believe it may be God's will next week, we're going to actually get into the evangelism part of this teaching. But what I need us to see is if we don't deal with certain spirits that we know have been on us, in us, riding us for years, we're going to mess around and pass it to somebody a little less powerful, a little less knowledgeable than us. Yes. Or somebody who may not have as much influence, whatever the case may be. Or it could be somebody just as anointed or if not more anointed. Either way, spirits are transferable. Yes. And I don't want to sound so deep by saying well, spirits are transferable. But what I'm saying is, uh, 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 spirits have habits. Oh yes, oh yes, that's right. Oh yes. And if we're not careful, we will pattern ourselves after the wrong people. Or here's where it can really get bad when somebody patterns himself after you, and you know you're doing wrong. Amen. Oh, that's right. The man don't no follow me. Don't no follow me. <laughs> Because now we'll adopt the saying, don't do as I do, do as I say. Yes. Come on. Lord, help. Lord, I'm at verse 22 through 24, but my last verse is verse 27. I want to see, I'm, I'm, I'm right at 830, but let me see if I can finish this real quickly. Joab's messenger arrived in Jerusalem and gave the king the full report. He said the enemy was too much for us. This is the report he now being read. The enemy was too much for us. They advanced on us in the open field, and we pushed them back to the city gate. And then arrows came hot and heavy on us from the city wall. And 18 of the king's soldiers died. Verse 25 of the Message Bible. When the messenger completed his report on the battle, David got angry at Joab. Again, remember I told you that manipulation and, and all this stuff, it can be patterned. Why did I say that very strategically? Because Joab knew the spirit of David. Y'all not catching my preach. And apparently, before he sent the messenger to David, Joab already knew how David was going to react. When the messenger completed his report on the battle, David got angry at Joab. He vented on the messenger. Why? This is now David talking. Why did you get so close to the city? Didn't you know you'd be attacked from the wall? Didn't you remember how Amalek, the son of, 
uh, uh, Jebusite got killed wasn't it a woman who dropped a millstone on him from the wall and crushed him at the bed? Now David's going through a, 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 a going down memory lane on the strategy of what they did. You got to really do your study on it. This was how they lost men in the past by this strategy. But because this strategy was put together on purpose so one could be killed, too many people lost their lives. And when David heard about how it happened, he's not looking at, look, he looking strictly at the strategy. Not realizing that who you wanted to die, died. Look at the question David asks in the bottom of verse 25. Why did you go close to the wall? By the way, said Joab's messenger, your servant Uriah the Hitchite is dead. The messenger followed exactly how Joab said to deliver the message. Yes. Yes, right. He followed it to a T. Yes. And everything Joab said would happen, happened. That's right. Without David knowing that Joab manipulated even the message. Yes. That's right. Yes, the teacher. Set up. Mom. Set up. Yeah. Then David. Then David told the messenger, oh, I see. Tell Joab, hold on, look at the, look, look at, look at the emotional change. Why are you letting this happen? No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, um, Uriah did. Oh, okay, well, um, look here. Um, then David told the messenger, oh, I see. Tell Joab, don't trouble yourself over this. Oh, you were just upset, David. Now you're telling the messenger to go tell Joab, don't jump yourself over this. Yeah. Now look at what he says. I love the message Bible. Now you're going to see why I had to switch to the message Bible. David said in the message Bible translation, don't trouble yourself over this. War kills. Uh -huh. yeah. Sometimes one, sometimes another. Yeah. You never know who's next. Now he told, exactly, now, now David tells Joab, messenger to tell Joab, listen, I want you to recruit, redouble your assault on the city and destroy it, yeah. encourage Joab. Ooh. Ooh. Come on. Verse 26 through 27, and we're done with this, and I think I'm going to let it be going four minutes over, because I'm going to finish it right here. This is verse 26, 27, this is the end of this chapter. And we're done with this part of it, and we'll go on. If the Lord says the same, we will go into strict teaching on evangelism, and that's how this series is going to close out. I pray it's been a blessing because it's coming to an end. Amen. Verse 26 through 27. Watch it, look at it with me. And we're getting ready to go. Verse 26 through 27. When Uriah's wife heard that her husband was dead. She grieved for her husband. My Lord. So what this now tells me is that David's decision that started out inwardly, then became outwardly, then had one sin after the other, not only caused 19 people to die, yes. but it caused a 20th person in Bathsheba to die, but her death was not physical, it was emotional. Right. It was mental. When Uriah's wife heard that her husband was dead, she grieved for her husband. When the time of mourning was over, David sent someone to bring her to his house. She became his wife and bore him a son. You tried to just Go on with life. Yeah. You waited until she was done mourning. Yeah. Okay. So apparently, I'm not trying to add nothing to the text, but I'm pretty sure David probably did as he did before, probably sent somebody by, hey, you, you still hear her crying over there? Uh -huh. Is she still upset? Okay. All right. Now this is day one where we haven't heard her cry. Let's let a little time go by. Let's make sure that she's fully out of mourning. Come on, come on. Come on. 
okay, you know what? She see, you saw her with a what now? You saw her smile? You saw her going back to her regular things she used to do? Okay, cool. Tell you what, go sit for her. Y'all don't mind if I tell it my way, do you? Go sit her for me. Tell her to come over. I'm going to have steak, wine, and all that. We're going to set it up real nice. David probably cut on a little Luther, mm -hmm. a little Teddy Pendergrass. Well, y'all, y'all don't mind if I tell the story my way, do it. Y'all, y'all told me I can tell it my way. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Probably turn on a little Lou Rawls, a little mm -hmm. love and happiness. Yeah. Turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it like that. Something to make you do wrong. Turn it like that. Oh, y'all too safe for me. It's all right. Turn it like that. A little Lou. Oh, don't give a shot on Lou. A little lady. She became his wife and bore him a son. Yes, yes. But God got with me. Again, I repeat my statement that I made before we're done. It, sin can become dangerous when you try to move on from it. Hear my slight statement. Would you hide my shy? Sin has to be killed. Why do you think lambs and rams and different animals had to die for the remission of sin? Sin can't be swept under the rug. I wish I had some help in here. Sin can't be swept under the rug as if something did not cause it to be alive. Sin has to, I feel the old holiness preacher in me now. Sin has to be killed. Sin has to be killed. Sin has to die. And this is why, as we started out when we talked about David, yeah. David's son ended up being the one that died. Oh Come on. You don't believe me? What does the Bible say? That's right. That the wages, the payment That's right. of sin is death. That's right. We don't get rid of him, we'll get rid of you. Thank you, Apostle. Exactly the point that I'm trying to make. If you don't get rid of it, it'll get rid of you. You got to get in your spirit that if I don't kill this lust, perversion, manipulation, lust, sabotage, being drunk, gluttonous, I'm thinking I'm getting away when I know I ain't getting away. If you don't kill it, to kill you. And it may not always be physical, but it can cause you relationships. Y'all ain't talking. It can cost you relationships that could have been good to you. It can cost you opportunities. It can cost you time with loved ones that you could have had, but you allowed the sin to keep living instead of confronting that devil. And saying, either you got to go, or I got to go. This house, this town, this environment, this space is not big enough for the both of us. So you got to go. Somebody open up your mouth and say, sin, you got to go. I dare somebody. I'm closing. We're done. Brother Joseph, come on out because we're done. But tell somebody, this, this thing, I don't care what it is. You can call it out even now if you want to. Whatever you've been struggling with, whatever's been trying, you know what's been trying to ride your mind, trying to take away your sleep, trying to bother your heart and mind, trying to make you go back on what you made a covenant and a, and a promise to God that I wouldn't go back. You got to tell that sin, stay in the grave where I put you. I put you in the grave and you ain't coming back. I'm not gonna bring you back to life. You gonna you gonna stay dead. Put you my foot, my Jesus. 
Snake said, if you let the devil ride eventually, he's going to ask to drive. He's going to want to drive. If you let the devil ride, he's going to want to drive. If you let the devil ride, he's going to want to drive. Amen. We're done. Come on, clap those hands all over. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Again, I pray as we're getting ready to close that you heard something tonight that blessed you. Oh yeah. That um encourages you. Amen. I pray that Amen. this lesson tonight caused you to be encouraged. Yeah. But that I believe that for those that, because I know I do, needed this to start and continue some deliverance in me. So it is my prayer that it has done so. Because sometimes you got, no, it ain't sometimes, all the time, you got to be honest with yourself. You, you got to be honest with yourself and say to yourself that what, what, that what the preacher may be preaching about, there may be a particular sin that the preacher may be preaching about or whatever, that it may not be what I'm dealing with, but I do know what I'm dealing with. Yes. Amen. And so I know that, yeah, this thing, it's got to go. Amen. First John, what is that? Amen. Tell somebody, this thing got to go. Amen. Amen. So, again, let's thank God for tonight's Bible study. Amen. Again, I pray it was a blessing to you. Amen. Amen. Again, I want to remind us that Thursday, tomorrow at 7.30, we'll be on our virtual prayer um, from 7.30 until. Amen. And then Friday as well, right? We'll get back to you. Amen. But, amen, let's stand. You want, let's let our pastor close this out. Amen. Let's thank God for our pastor on tonight. Oh, come on. Let's clap our hands for our pastor on tonight. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed night, everybody.